Good evening, friends. Uh, it's good for us as God's people to draw our strength and encouragement from his word. And uh, as we see or hear the numbers of uh, cases rise across the country and around the world, and especially uh, as more and more of us are hearing of uh, friends, loved ones uh, that are getting ill, uh, it's good for us to anchor our hope in uh, the Lord and his uh, comfort and blessing. And I want us to come and turn tonight to 2 Corinthians chapter 20. Uh, I was reading this passage recently. It's a passage that I've been uh, for a long time, uh, meditating on, thinking about. And it's one of those beautiful moments where we see God's people in faith cast themselves upon the Lord in a, a, a crisis moment that is beyond their uh, uh, own capacities. And uh, uh, in this time, I think it's a, it's a good place for us as God's people to remind ourselves that the battle and uh, the struggle we have is not our own. It's not to be fought in our own strength, but it is God's battle. And we need to cast ourselves upon him. Let's see how God's people of old have done that. And let's turn our hearts uh, to follow in seeking God for his help in this time of crisis. So turn with me, uh, uh, and I'll begin reading for us there in verse 1 uh, of this great chapter. Second Chronicles 20. After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites, and with them some of the Menunites, came against Jehoshaphat for battle. Jehoshaphat was king of uh, the southern kingdom uh, in Israel, the, 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 the uh, Jerusalem and Judah. And uh, we begin to reflect upon his reign already in uh, chapter 17 uh, we are told of uh, this godly king uh, Jehoshaphat and uh, we get quite a reflection on his reign here in Chronicles much more uh, than Kings gives us and here was a godly king and yet his rule was, a, was, was mixed because he is married to that uh, worshipper of Baal, uh, uh, King Ahab, uh, who married Jezebel and through her was seduced to uh, worship the god of uh, the pagan nations. And he marries the daughter of King Ahab. And he goes to war with King Ahab, this godly king. And so when he returns, uh, we read uh, in uh, um, chapter 19, uh, verse 2, But Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to the king, uh, to King Jehoshaphat, should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Because of this, wrath has gone out against you from the Lord. Nevertheless, some good is found in you, for you destroyed Azeroth out of the land and have set your heart to seek God. This captures very beautifully this tension that we find in Jehoshaphat. He is a man who has set his heart to seek the Lord. And yet he often 
does uh, form alliances and compromise that witness. And here he finds himself in trouble. He fi uh, he, uh, um, there is this coalition of Moabites and Ammonites, the, the descendants of Lot, who lives on the far side of the, uh, uh, the Dead Sea. And they have formed a alliance with, and here we're a little unsure, they're here called the Menunites, the Arabs. Later they will be called from Mount Seir. Is it Edomites? Maybe uh, we're not quite sure. But it is a, a, a alliance of three nations. And uh, we are told that they are coming against uh, Jehoshaphat, they are marching against Jerusalem uh, uh, to destroy the king. And uh, in verse 2, we are told that they are a great multitude. And when the king finds out about their uh, coalition and their march uh, to destroy him, they are already in the promised land. They have crossed over, and so they're on their way. Listen uh, to what we read in verse 2. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, A great multitude is coming against you from Eden, from beyond the sea. And behold, they are on Hazar Tamar, that is, En Gedi. The En Gedi is... In, on the Israelite side of the Dead Sea, about the middle of the Dead Sea. So they're already within the borders of the, the Promised Land, and they are already marching, uh, maybe a, only a few days' march from Jerusalem. Not a lot of time uh, to prepare your forces and get ready for battle. And Jehoshaphat had a great amount uh, of forces. We read uh, uh, the, about his armies and how many men of war he has. Uh, there in chapter 17, uh, beginning in verse 14, this was the muster of them by father's houses of Judah, the commander of thousands, Adna, the commander, with 3,000 mighty men of valor, and next to him, Jehonahan, the commander, with 2,280,000. Uh, I'm sounding like uh, uh, the South African previous president who couldn't say the numbers as I wrestle with this. And uh, next to him, Amaziah, the son of Zikri, a volunteer uh, from the service of the Lord, with 200,000 mighty men of valor. And of Benjamin, Elida, a mighty man of valor, with 200,000 men armed with bow and shield. And next to him, Jehozabad, with 180,000 armed men of war. Now, if you count it up, it's over a million one hundred thousand men. It's a huge army that he can muster and put into the field. Is that what he's going to do? Will he gather his forces to fight? Hezekiah did that when the Assyrians came. He gathered his forces together. He 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 uh, closed all the 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 water pits around Jerusalem so that the, the, the armies of the Assyrians won't have water when they arrived there. He fortified the walls. He, he made sure there was enough food and water in the city and garrisoned themselves for the siege. But Jehoshaphat does none of that. Instead 
of preparing for war, we read, Then Jehoshaphat was afraid, and he set his face to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. And all the cities of Judah, from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Instead of mastering his forces for battle, Jehoshaphat takes his fear and lets his fear drive him not to despair, but to the Lord himself. Now, the fact that these godly kings, Hezekiah and Jehoshaphat, responds differently, tells us we have to be careful to say this is the only godly response to a crisis. But what is stunning here is that here is the king who has a mighty army, but he realized that if these armies that are marching towards him is God's judgment upon him, then all would be lost. Then it doesn't help that he has over a million soldiers to defend himself. He knows that only God's blessing can make an army succeed. And he has heard this prophecy that God's wrath is against him. And so he refuses to trust in his soldiers and he turns to the Lord. That's a beautiful expression of what uh, uh, the psalmist says in Psalm 20 verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. He, this king, shows his heart is set upon the Lord. He seeks the Lord. And notice, he is not alone. He calls all of God's people to join him to seek the Lord. He declares a fast, a fast that expresses their humility their understanding that they have nothing that can sustain them, not even food, and they're sacrificing their food because they know God's favor is more important than anything else now. They display in their attitude a true longing, a Seeking that is from the heart for the Lord himself and for the Lord's blessing. If the Lord do not go out with them or fight with them, all is lost. You see, there are times when we face situations that are so enormous that it is only the Lord that is able to drive us, sustain us, and bring us through. This coronavirus crisis is meant to bring us as God's people truly to the place where we seek the Lord with all our heart. May the Lord help us all to truly seek him, knowing that he alone can supply uh, the victory and the rescue from this great uh, crisis. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you draw near to those who draw near to you. That you promise that those who seek you with all their heart will find you. And we find you, Lord, not because we seek you, but because you reveal yourself as the God who truly rescues those in need. And we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, our 
our great Saviour, who has shown us that you come to seek and to save those who are lost. Will you come, Lord, and bring us the rescue we need? Keep us in your hand. Be with those who are ill and sick and give them relief. And may those who are weak and frail and may even approach death itself, may they know that you are the one who has triumphed even over death and that even in death, those who believe in Christ will never be severed from him. So give us the confidence, O Lord, to know that we are safe forever in you because of our Saviour Jesus Christ. May we seek him with all our heart and see him as he sought us with all his heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you and your family tonight. Bye-bye.